Hey guys, my name is Christian Taylor. Welcome back to Crayler Made, where I like to show you how to build websites, how to get online, and how to build a brand. So today, I am so excited for this video. I have put in weeks of preparation to show you the best place to buy any kind of web hosting, whether it's for a WordPress site, or a completely custom site, or something else. Here are seven very popular web hosts, and I'm gonna break them down and let you know where you should spend your money and where you should host your website. Stay tuned. If you want to know all about online marketing, social media, and building an online presence, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, I'm going to start with Bluehost because they are such a popular web host. Chances are, if you googled where to buy web hosting or best web host, Bluehost was likely at the top of a lot of lists. Now one thing right off the bat that bothers me about Bluehost is that you have to buy yearly for the first sign up. It's really weird. So when you sign up, you have to buy a block of one year of hosting, but then after that you can renew monthly. That's like going up to a girl and asking her to marry you at first sight. Like. Maybe I just want to try monthly before I commit to paying for a year of hosting, but Bluehost has it all backwards. They're like, oh, yo, yeah, we need that one year commitment, and then you can switch to monthly. What? Okay. So I went ahead and signed up for a year of hosting for $60. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you sign up for Bluehost is some of the upsells are pre-checked. They are really working overtime to sell you stuff you don't necessarily need or stuff that may be helpful, but you don't have to pay for it. So pay attention on that sign up screen to what you're paying for. And if you don't want the code guard for backups or the site lock or whatever it is they try to sell you, go ahead and uncheck that box. Now the setup process for WordPress was super elegant. They let you pick from tons of free WordPress themes right there when the site is being set up and they pre-install plugins you should have, like a caching plugin to speed up your site, and an anti-spam plugin. These are plugins that Bluehost just puts on there by default, which I actually think is kind of cool. Maybe you're not really into tinkering with plugins, you just want to install WordPress and you want it to work well, Bluehost is going to make sure that you have a smooth and solid experience. Now the website and the hosting felt really fast thanks to that caching plugin I just mentioned and I really love that Bluehost makes it super easy to get support. There's no hiding things behind dark patterns or any of that. You just click help, you do a live chat, and they are right there to help you. So I did have a pretty positive experience with Bluehost. They do try a little too hard to upsell. They're kind of constantly throwing stuff in your face. So if that bothers you, maybe pick somewhere else. But if you're looking for the most flexible web host with lots of different add-ons and options available for purchase that you can add to your website and your hosting experience like G Suite for email hosting, backups, all that kind of stuff, I think you're going to love Bluehost and I can definitely recommend them for the most flexible hosting in the most options. All right, so next let's talk about SiteGround. And boy, <laughs> do I have things to say about SiteGround. All right, so unlike Bluehost, they offer you a monthly option right from the start, which is awesome. Thank you, SiteGround. Except they charge you a $14.95 ding fee as a setup fee if you choose monthly. Why? Why are these guys trying to make it so hard to just try a month of hosting? Now everything was just downhill from here. I went ahead and signed up for the hosting and it was not easy to set up WordPress. I had to dig around in some like scary convoluted retro looking menus and the entire site ground panel is just dated, very cluttered, and extremely hard to find what you're looking for. It took a solid 30, maybe 40 minutes for my site to be set up, but there was like no indicator of that. Wow, okay, thanks for the communication, guys. It would be nice to know that there's about a 30 to 40 minute window for the automated setup, so do keep that in mind if you choose SiteGround. However, I would strongly advise against choosing SiteGround for two reasons. Number one, I really dislike their panel, which I already talked about. It's cluttered and it's hard to use. But number two, 
they make getting support so ridiculously hard and I cannot get behind that. Look, if you're trusting a company to host your website and to hold the files so when someone types your domain name, your website comes up, you need a company you can rely on and you need a company you can reach out to if you're having any trouble or if your site is down or anything like that. And the amount of time it takes to get SiteGround's attention is unacceptable. They use what's called a dark pattern. A dark pattern is where you manipulate an interface in such a way that it makes no sense to get to where they don't want you to get. So they don't want you to contact them. They try and deflect you by looking at their knowledge base articles and all this stuff. And as you can see in this screen recording, to contact them, you literally have to press this tiny, absurd, little link that you probably would miss if you're not really paying attention to contact them. That's not something I can support, so I would recommend staying away from SiteGround and choosing someone else. All right, now let's talk Namecheap. Namecheap has always been a company I've loved for both web hosting and domains. I have all of my personal domains with Namecheap and I have recommended them in the past to my web clients. It is really easy to set up and their new easy WP hosting is so extremely intuitive and it is the fastest I have ever seen a WordPress site get set up and up and running and on the internet. As you can see here, Namecheap's easy WP hosting is completely targeted at being fast, easy, and simple with nothing else, no gimmicks, and it's very reasonable, costing only $3.88 a month or $30.88 a year. Now, it was really hard to find downsides to Namecheap's hosting. It's incredibly fast and smooth, and the experience is just so simple. I think this is gonna be appealing for those of you who don't wanna tinker with a bunch of panels or settings. However, the issue I had with Namecheap's EZWP hosting is that they don't offer daily backups even as an upsell. So every other host on this list offers daily backups either included in the cost or for an upsell, a paid upsell, which I think is reasonable. It's not uncommon for a host to ask you for extra money to back up your site daily automatically. But Namecheap just has nothing, nothing at all. They don't include automated daily backups and they don't let you pay for automated daily backups. The best you can do with EasyWP is create a manual backup, which is free, but you have to remember to do that and the whole point of automated backups is to make sure that if your site crashes or gets hacked or anything happens, your backup is there and you didn't even have to think about it. You just restore the backup and you're good to go. Now, you can use an external backup service like CodeGuard to back up your Namecheap EasyWP hosting, but that costs around $5 a month or $60 a year. So when you figure that in, you're paying about $9.80 cents per month for Namecheap's hosting, which is a little bit expensive. It's not completely unreasonable and it is not the most expensive option on this list, but you are gonna have to keep that in mind when you're buying hosting if you want those daily backups. All right, trucking right along, let's talk about HostGator. This is another one of those very large hosting companies that you might recognize right away. They've been out there for years and they have a huge, presence online. Now my experience with HostGator was very interesting. Now they do the little things that drive me nuts. Like the prices they put on their website are for 36 months of hosting. They'll be like, oh, only $5 a month but it's actually like $15 a month if you pay month to month and it's $5 a month if you pay for three years at once. However, that's kind of a pretty common practice and I will say that they thankfully let you pay month to month with no issues, no setup fees, no forcing a year of hosting on you. If you wanna buy a month of hosting from HostGator, you can buy a month of hosting from HostGator. But overall, the panel was a simple and relatively nice experience. Now my trouble with HostGator is that they actually don't offer enough upsells for my preference or, or the types of upsells I'm looking for. Now I know you're like, Christian, what are you talking about? No one likes to be upsold. I know, but hear me out. So HostGator's WordPress hosting plan 
includes a one gigabyte CodeGuard account. CodeGuard is an external backup service and HostGator has worked with them to offer daily backups up to one gigabyte of files. So I'm like, all right, what happens if my WordPress site exceeds a gigabyte of files? Because if you upload a lot of images and stuff to your blog, that's not uncommon for it to be bigger than a gig of files, and the HostGator account itself is bigger than a gig, so you could exceed that perfectly fine. So I chat into their live chat, I'm like, hey, how can I upgrade my code guard if I require more than a gig of backup per day? And they're like, oh, right, uh, you actually can't. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, HostGator, did you just miss an opportunity to upsell me and have me pay you more money? I'm pretty sure that's exactly what just happened. Ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> HostGator's support is also extremely slow. They do make it easy to get to, so I'll give them credit for that. There's no dark patterns like with SiteGround, but you're gonna be waiting a while. It is painfully slow. So for the support, price, and no ability to increase the backup storage, I would not recommend HostGator. I personally would stay away from them. All right, next we're gonna talk about iPage. Once again, this is another popular web host that you may have heard about, and I'm not exactly sure why they're so popular. Now, my experience was kind of similar to SiteGround with iPage, but maybe not as bad. They have a lot of upsells, they have a cluttered and confusing panel, and then they make it hard to buy things you wanna buy after the fact. For example, when you go to sign up with iPage, they're like, hey, buy backups, buy this, buy that. Maybe you're not ready for that yet. So you may uncheck the things by just the hosting, and if you decide you wanna add daily backups to your site later, well, I could not find it anywhere in the panel. I dug through every single menu, and it ends up you have to go to the main iPage website, not through your hosting panel, and buy backups through there. Overall, the panel was just extremely confusing. It was kind of hard to set up WordPress. It took a couple extra steps to get things up and running. And I think there are plenty of better options out there. So I guess I don't have like a huge problem with iPage. I don't have like an issue with their support or this or that, but I didn't have a great experience there. And I personally would stay away from iPage. All right, we got just two left, so let's talk about Hostinger. Now this is a web host that I expected to hate based on their website, but I actually ended up loving them. So here's what I dislike about Hostinger. They're one of those websites that when you go to their site, they try to pressure you to buy immediately. As soon as you go to their site, they have this countdown starting from 21 hours, and they act like they're having this super mega sale, and if you don't buy within 21 hours, you're gonna miss out on the deals. But here's the thing, that's just their price. That's always their price, Anytime you go to their site, that 21 hour countdown starts and it just resets every time you visit the site. So based on that alone, I had a bad taste in my mouth going into it and trying Hostinger. I was very cautious. I'm like, all right, if they're doing this, what other sorts of annoying tactics are they doing to try and pressure me? But what I found was completely different from what I expected. Hostinger had the most impressive setup screen I've seen on any web host. They made it super easy to install WordPress and get going right away. They weren't too pushy about upselling me on the initial signup screen. And they even give you a temporary URL to start editing your site right away without having to point your domain there yet. So if you don't know what I'm saying, when you buy a domain name, you have to point it to the web host, and this can take up to 48 hours before your domain points there. Well, Hostinger solved this issue by giving you a temporary URL that you can use to modify your site and start building it until your domain name is pointing to them. And I think that's really efficient, it's very considerate of your time, and I'm a huge fan of what Hostinger is doing. In addition, they offer lots of quality add-ons, like daily backups for 95 cents a month, or G Suite for email hosting, or NordVPN, and all of these are easy to 
to add at any time. It's right there in the panel. You just go and you add it to your account and it's very simple. Now the hosting with Hostinger was also speedy fast and I was just overall blown away with the service I received from Hostinger. Their 24 seven support is no joke. It's right there in the bottom right corner. You just click it and you chat away and someone replies usually within a minute. I was very impressed. I was so impressed with Hostinger that I'm recommending them as the best overall option, the balance between value, support, and features. So if you're looking for the most well-rounded experience, Hostinger is gonna be for you. All right, to wrap things up, let's look at our last company, and that is DreamHost. So DreamHost offers the best month-to-month -month options, in my opinion, if you're kind of looking for that well-rounded experience and you don't want to break the bank and you're not able to pay yearly. So DreamHost has plans from $4.95 per month, no catches, no setup fees, no big gotchas, just $4.95 a month. You can get started right away and they make it simple to sign up for that. Now, like many of the other hosts on this list, there are some upsells that are pre-checked during the checkout, which I don't love, but it is so common that I'm not gonna get onto DreamHost too much for that. Now the panel was a little bit confusing, but the graphics are inviting, and DreamHost does offer lots of upsells for you. One thing I love about DreamHost is they do daily backups automatically and they do it for free. You don't have to pay anything else, it doesn't matter how big your website is, none of that. So if you're catching what I'm saying, this is a great value for $4.95 a month. Now there are some hoops to jump through to get to their support. It's not ridiculously complex like SiteGround, and I wouldn't necessarily call it extreme dark patterns, but they do try to deflect you just a little bit. However, when you're able to get to their support, they are relatively helpful, they're friendly, and I don't think you're gonna have any issues there. So I would recommend DreamHost if you're looking for a month-to-month -month option and the best value and not breaking the bank. Okay, so in conclusion, if you're looking for the hosting with the most options and tinkering available, Bluehost is gonna be for you. They have a very robust panel with plenty of upsells and add-ons that you can purchase and set up, and it's gonna be kind of a lot of fun if you like to tinker around with different features and services with web hosting. If you're just looking for a simple and easy set it and forget it web host for your WordPress website, Namecheap is gonna be for you. There's hardly any options to mess with, but that's the beauty of it if you don't wanna worry about things. Just keep in mind that extra added cost for CodeGuard if you want your website backed up daily. Now, if you're looking for the best, most well-rounded web host and the best overall balance of value, features, and add-ons, then you definitely should go with Hostinger. And finally, if you're like, hey, I really don't have a lot of money, I just wanna pay the minimum amount possible monthly, and that's it, I can't afford to pay yearly, I don't wanna have to pay for upsells or extra things for daily backups or any of that, then DreamHost is gonna be the way to go for you. So which web host did you pick? I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you liked this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. With that said, I will catch you guys next time.